Hello, today we're going to look at cookies in PHP. So this is just going to be the absolute basics, what you need to know to get them up and running. And so this is just going to be the basics. Uh, as you'll see, it's not a ton of work. It's more work trying to come up with a, a good scheme to use them in your site, but just implementing them is not real difficult. I also can't help but think about sessions when I'm on this topic. So cookies are a little bit more permanent than a, than a session. That's, that's kind of what how you want to think about these things. All right, so if you want to use cookies, it's really just a one-liner. It is, so I'm in block PHP here. I'm just going to call a function called set cookie. And so the set cookie function, you can kind of see right here that it takes a whole bunch of arguments, potentially. Um, you really probably, in most instances, you're going to use three. So the basic tutorial is going to be three. So the first thing you're going to pass it is the name. And so you, know, you can call it like, uh, I'll just call it name, right? Which is pretty horrible. Uh, I'm going to store some kind of a name in there like Ken. All right, so the first thing you pass it is the name. The next thing is the value. So name, I guess, how about name Ken, right? That makes sense. And then the last thing is the expiration date. So a cookie lives as long as you tell it to live. If you don't explicitly tell the cookie how long to live, then it's going to expire with the browser session. In other words, when you close, click that X up in the corner and you close the window, that is when it expires, unless you give it a time. Uh, and so you should, probably should give it a time because if you just want this information to expire uh, with, this, with the browser window, then you probably just want to use a session. All right, so how you do this, this is a timestamp. So what you want to do is call the time function, which is a way to access like the time as of the moment the script is run, plus something. Right, so something in seconds. So if you want it to last for a minute, you'd write that. And if you wanted it to last for an hour, then you would do something like that. And so that would last for an hour. Oftentimes, these will last a really long time. So there are maximums as to lo how long they can last, but they can certainly last months. A good example of where you see cookies would be like, uh, imagine a shopping website where you add some stuff to your cart, you come back two weeks later and you still got two things in your cart. That is a cookie. And so you can set these things to expire way out in the future, or you can just do something like that. That right there, that is how you create a cookie. So just call the function, specify the name of the cookie, the value, and the time when you want it to expire. Now to illustrate that this worked, it's gonna be a weird illustration, but I'll do it. I'm gonna do a little echo down here. And so in my echo, I'm going to write a name. And then I want to spit out the name of the, the cookie. And so the cookie is a super global. It's an array, so I need to wrap it in curly braces. The name of the array is dollar sign underscore cookie. And then in square brackets, I'm going to say the name of the cookie. The name is name. I, I realize now that that was a really bad name. I mean, it is a name. My name is Ken, but I keep, I say, I'm saying name in like, like six times per sentence, which doesn't work so great. So that's kind of how it works. In theory, uh, you'll see that it doesn't work out quite the way we hope it does in practice. So I refresh and I get something like that. Let me try and show you the problem here. So if I make this, so let's go Keith. All right, trying to illustrate the problem. It might be kind of difficult. I'm going to refresh. And you see what still says Ken? So this problem that happens here. So cookies are set with headers. So kind of what me what that means is when I press refresh on this page, this thing happens. And uh, at the point where this stuff is echoed out on the page, that hasn't been updated yet. So typically when you're doing cookies in a situation like this, you need to refresh the page. I'll show you when I refresh it, it'll say Keith. So there's always like a lag and you can see that and let's just do one more just to show you kind of what you're dealing with because this is going to drive you crazy when you start messing around with this. So I go here, I refresh. The first time I refresh it, it sets the cookie, but it hasn't really been updated yet. So you got to refresh again. There's a couple ways you can handle that. One of them is to have like a landing page where it says, you know, thanks for logging in or, or whatever it says. And then it kicks you back to this page and it's updated. Or you can do a manual refresh. And I've, I've done videos on that before. All right, so that is how you set up a cookie. Now let me show you the kind of cool part. So I want to show you a page called Cookies Test. And on this page, I just want to do this, this line, literally, just to show you that that information is persisting. 
right? That's the reason you use cookies is so the information will be carried from one page to another. It might last days or hours or weeks, but I'm going to open up this page now. Switch this over to localhost. Press enter and you can see there's my name, right? So my name is Kara there and my name's Kara there. That's a, that's a good example of a cookie. It's a lot like a session, but the difference between cookies and sessions is that cookies can outlast sessions. They can last longer than the, the browser session. So that's my syntax. Like they're not a ton of work to implement, but coming up with an effective way to use them is is part of the challenge as well. So yeah, you know, I'll make another video where I show more of like a practical application of these. Uh, thanks for watching.